Hello everyone and welcome back to this Bible story time. Whether you're joining us on Friday or whatever other day, I am so glad we can be together sharing in these stories. So grab your juice or water or a cup of tea or coffee if you're a bit older, whatever you need for this time, and let's gather into this space. Gather together and also remember that God is gathered here with us. And so as we do each week, we'll light this candle to signify that in this space. Because just as we can gather across time and across the internet and all the rest, so too can God be here. Now, if you were with us last week, you know that we're covering some of the stories of Jesus' friends after his resurrection on Easter. And last week we had Peter and some of the other friends. This week we get to Thomas. Don't ask so many questions, Thomas. That's what Thomas's teacher said in school. That's what Thomas's parents said at home. That's what Thomas's friends said. But Thomas couldn't help it. When the rabbi, the teacher, told them things in school, Thomas often asked, how do you know? Some, Thomas had to be quiet, but he didn't like the teacher's answer. Thomas was sad when his questions made people angry, but he couldn't stop asking. And when Thomas grew older, he became one of Jesus's friends. He became a disciple. Thomas liked Jesus because Jesus never told him to stop asking questions. And one day, Jesus was trying to explain what was going to happen. I'm going away, said Jesus. I'm going to get a place ready for you. And God's house has room for you and for everyone else. You know the way to God's house. No, we don't, said Thomas. What is the way? That's a good question, Thomas, smiled Jesus. I am the way. If you really love me and love each other, then you already know the way. I still don't understand all of it, said Thomas. That's okay, said Jesus. Just keep asking questions. N not long after that, Jesus died. He was killed by people who didn't like the way he said that God loved everyone. And Thomas was very sad when Jesus was killed. So when some of the other disciples said Jesus was alive again, Thomas really wanted to believe them, but he couldn't. His mind kept asking questions. How can somebody be dead and then be alive again? When some of the disciples told Thomas they had seen Jesus, Thomas asked, how can you be sure it was Jesus? How do you know it wasn't somebody else? But we saw him with our own eyes, said the disciples. Maybe, said Thomas. But I have to see for myself. I have to see the places in Jesus' hand where they put the nails. Otherwise, I won't believe it. So a few days later, Thomas and his friends were together. All the doors were closed, but suddenly, there Jesus was, in the room with them. He smiled at Thomas. Come here, my friend. Touch the places where they put the nails. It really is me. And Thomas began to cry. He was so happy to see Jesus. Yes, it is you, Jesus. I am so glad. Now I know that you are alive again. I won't ask any more questions. Oh, don't stop asking questions, Thomas, said Jesus. I am glad you are able to see me so you can be sure. Then you can believe. But there will be lots of people who won't be able to see me. They will ask questions too. And it will be hard for them to believe, just as it was hard for you to believe. I will need you to help tell them my story. You mean, you're not angry because I didn't believe right away that you were alive again, 
Thomas asked. No, not angry at all, said Jesus. I like it when people ask hard questions. But you won't understand everything, Thomas. You will never find answers to all your questions. Just remember that I love you and that God loves you. Though nobody can prove that part, it is the part that is the most true. We do a lot of wondering, don't we? I'm glad to hear in this story that we don't have to wonder if that's okay. But I wonder what it must have been like for Thomas to keep asking questions all the time. I wonder if it was hard to just believe or accept things for what someone says. I wonder what he must have been like in those classes with the teachers and the rabbis or at home with his parents and he kept asking questions. I wonder if some of you feel like Thomas too. I wonder if in school you ask a lot of questions or you ask your parents a lot of questions. And for those who are older, I wonder if how you feel when your kids or someone else asks you a lot of questions too. I wonder how Jesus was so accepting of all those questions. I wonder how that made Thomas feel to be in a place where questions were okay. And I wonder how he must have felt, how Thomas must have felt when he was so sad after Jesus left, but all of his other friends said he had come back. I wonder if that was just so unbelievable that Thomas had to keep asking questions. I wonder if he asked those questions to protect himself from being hurt. I wonder if you sometimes do that too. And I am so glad that Jesus loves us and that Jesus says all of these questions are okay. And so I wonder with that, what other questions we might have. I wonder what other things you're wondering about. And I know that we can take that all to God. So let's do that today and pray. Dear God, in this story, you tell us that all the questions we have and all the wonderings we have are okay. But you also tell us that we, like Thomas, are meant to share your stories, your good news, with all those who continue to wonder and question. I pray that as we've heard so many stories about you already, that we will not only share them in this space, but share them with our friends and our family and those around us, share them with the whole world who wonders. Pray that we do this in the coming week and in the time ahead as we begin to gather again together, see one another more often and wonder in community together. Amen. So you've been told just like Thomas to go out and share those wonderings and those questions and those stories with everyone around you. And as you go out, share that light of God as well, because though it ends in this space, it continues wherever you're at. The light and love of God goes with you there as well.